First team on the list that we want to talk about, the Green Bay Packers. Head scratcher, first round, training up, number 26, Jordan Love, huh? The quarterback from Utah State. Your, your, your team is one game away from the Super Bowl. You're in the NFC Championship. You get blown out, which that's okay. That's okay. Things happen. You need offensive talent, it seems like, especially at the wide receiver position because you've got one of the best quarterbacks, not just in the NFL today, but I believe in, of all time in Aaron Rodgers. The things that he can do um, are phenomenal. You draft a quarterback when you already have a quarterback. Matt LaFleur, the head coach of the Packers, stated that he believes that Aaron Rodgers will be the quarterback for the next few years. Okay? But then why draft Love? Why, why draft him if you're not going to play him for the next four to five years? And I think, just my personal opinion, the reason may be with Aaron Rodgers' contract coming out Coming up in the next year or two, he's going to ask for a lot of money, and I don't think that they're going to resign him just because of his age and just because of the amount of money that he's wanting. And this is the this is the chance, it seemed like, for Matt LaFleur to get the quarterback that he wanted with Jordan Love, pull the trigger on that, and have him uh, sit and, and learn. By the way, we've said this numerous times for the last few weeks, the whole concept of sitting and learning for a quarterback does not make any sense. It's not true. It does not work. Leave your comments down below. I'm done talking about it. I don't want to get too much into it. I think they should have drafted a wide receiver. That's just my personal opinion. We had LaVisca Chanel in our mock draft uh, being the wide receiver taken from Green Bay. But then they added some help for Aaron Rodgers with uh, a running back, A.J. Dillon, uh, in the second round. And then a third round, they added a tight end and Josiah DeGuara. So not too bad uh, of a draft, but the first round was when you could really make an impact. And for the time being, and an immediate impact, probably not so much, but for the long term, we're just going to have to wait and see how Jordan Love does. Moving on to the Chicago Bears. Their first selection was in the second round because of the whole Khalil Mack trade that they made a couple years ago. Second round, 43rd pick, Cole Komet, the tight end from Notre Dame. I like this pick. I really do. I think that Cole Komet obviously was the uh, best tight end talent in that draft class. But on top of that, Chicago has been looking for a tight end uh, for the past few years, it seems like. Trey Burton, that whole experiment ended up being a, a, a bust because he signed a four-year, $32 million contract. Didn't even last uh, two. Well, he lasted two years, didn't go to year three. So uh, he's gone. He's to uh, Indianapolis now. But Cole Komet could be that replacement for him. Uh, they signed Jimmy Graham, which maybe he's past that point, past his prime, but uh, he could still be a factor in helping out uh, Mitch Trubisky or Nick Foles and whoever wins that quarterback job. Then in the second round, you get Jalen Johnson, the defensive back at uh, pick number 50. So we thought this was a really good pick. I love Jalen Johnson. Uh, in our mock draft, we had Jalen Johnson going in the first round, I believe uh, to the 49ers at number 31. So Jalen Johnson is a late first-round talent that you got midway through the second round. So this is a, a good pickup to help their secondary for Chicago. The next NFC East team that we want to talk about, the Minnesota Vikings. So the Vikings made a move. I believe that they had the most selections in the draft when it was all said and done, and this was because of the amount of trades uh, that they made. The biggest pick was round one, number 22, uh, Justin Jefferson, the wide receiver, that's 6'1", 208 pounds, pretty fast as it is, and is comparable, I compared him to Stephon Diggs. And so that's why I thought Minnesota was going to make a huge move in trying to trade up uh, for St or for Justin Jefferson, but ended up falling to him at number 22. So that ended up being a good pick, trading him away and getting that 22 pick from Buffalo. Then at 31, they got that pick from San Francisco. They traded up to draft a corner in Jeff Gladney. So two first-round picks for uh, Minnesota. And then on top of that, they they keep on drafting in the second round and the third round. And then Ezra Cleveland, their offensive lineman, who was graded as a first-round talent, who just kept on moving up on draft boards. So Minnesota, for their, their first three picks, ended up doing really well. Next up, the last team in the NFC North is Detroit. Their first overall pick uh, or the first round pick, the third overall pick, 
a lot of people were talking about trading with the Detroit Lions. They want to trade back and they want to acquire a lot of picks, which, I mean, at the end of the day, they got a decent amount of selections. They decided to stay put at number three and draft the uh, lockdown corner, Jeff Okuda, the cornerback from Ohio State. Makes sense. Can't pass up on him. I like him to help out this Detroit secondary after the loss of Darius Slay. Uh, good replacement. And he's one of those lockdown corners that I feel like he's going to be playing in the league at a, at a good, good rate and is going to be successful in the league for the next 10 years. So Kuda, good job by them. And then they get a first-round talent running back in the second round with DeAndre Swift from Georgia. DeAndre Swift is going to eat in Detroit. I really love that pick. And not necessarily because I believe that DeAndre Swift, I mean, he could be a three-down back. I think he's talented enough to be. But think of that combo, Carrion Johnson and DeAndre Swift. Now, all of a sudden, things open up for Matthew Stafford in the pass game. So this Lions offense is looking much better. You get your defense, uh, your defensive cornerstone in the first round with Jeff Okuda, and then you get DeAndre Swift to help out that Lions offense. Let's go, Detroit. Good draft.